I was trying to get the slurp in before the time had finished and I ran out of time, so I'm really sorry. It's just gonna <laughs> I don't do it on purpose, guys. It's just it's like a it's a habit, it's a ritual. I just need to start my live streams with a sip of tea and have, have a nice cup of tea on the go. Because I'm off the source now, except for high days and holidays. <sighs> Good evening, everybody. I'm Charlie Lambden. This is Moving Home with Charlie. Welcome to another live stream where I share my views on the housing market um, with my insights from behind the scenes of the property industry for the last 20, 25 years or so, plus a few years in the city before that as a qualified investment broker. Um, and with contacts, I have a state agency software clients and contacts in the moving industry. And my mission is a search for the truth because the truth in the housing market the only truth we know is that the housing market is in a shockingly bad state generally speaking there's no transparency on house prices whatsoever and so it's extremely difficult to know what's really going on which suits many of those especially unscrupulous um companies in the moving sector because if you don't know what's going on then they can tell you anything that they like and the purpose of this video to try and give you some credible information that you can look at yourself because I provided links to everything in the description below and make up your own mind about what the market is doing where you live or where you want to live um, because it's different everywhere. I'm taking my time this evening. I really want to get this right because it's 18 months or so since I did my eight reasons UK house prices are collapsing. And in fact, the thumbnail I've used for this live stream is the thumbnail from that video, but it will get updated tomorrow with a new one. And it won't say what eight reasons why it will collapse. It'll say eight reasons why they are collapsing. And I do genuinely believe that overall, on average, in England and Wales, less in Scotland, I think Scotland is just actually on a time lag and is going to follow the UK but just behind time. Northern Ireland seems to be a law unto itself. I don't know anything about the Northern Ireland market. But England and Wales overall are seeing significant house price falls. There are some places where house prices are holding up better than in other places, notably, for example, Manchester. There are certain property types that are holding up better than others. And I've got great evidence from the land registry of exactly that in a London borough to show you this evening. So that you all understand that when you say what a house price is doing, you, you've got to ask yourself, what are house prices doing in the immediate locality that I live, which is in the region that I live, and what is the kind of property I'm looking at of the four different kinds, flats, terraced, semis, and detached? And am I looking at the higher or lower end of the price spectrum of those kinds of properties in that kind of area? Because they all do different things. There is no singular house price for the whole market. So I'm already confusing you. Well, but Charlie, are they going up or are they going down? Overall, on average, they are going down in England and Wales and soon Scotland and I don't know about Northern Ireland. And even within London, the London boroughs are all mixed up. But I just want to get into what I've done this evening is, I mean, today the ONS released its house price data, and I, and I have got it here to show you. I haven't linked it because it's completely uselessly unhelpful. Um, here we are. Uh, um, ba -ba -ba -ba. If my computer decides to play ball. Um, so this is not the graph I wanted to show you. Where's the graph I wanted to show you? It doesn't matter because it's completely, here it is, it's this one. It's this one. You know, I mean, what does that tell us? Down 0.6% year on year, up. Oh, God, it's gone. Hang on. Sorry. <laughs> Not on my game this evening. 
Here it is. 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 So what does this tell us really, right? If you if you want to move house and the government's released its house price data for today, uh, for the last year, what does this data tell you? That the average, but there are four different kinds of properties. So which property is this an average for? Oh, well, it's an average for all of them. Um, is a point, uh, half a point, half a percent down year on year, half a percent up month on month. How does that help anybody? How does that help anyone? It doesn't. So I haven't included that in the links below because it's not relevant. Let me get straight into the eight reasons that I think when you put, uh, and again, just before I start, I want to explain that I'm hoping that you might say that any one of these eight reasons on its own is not a reason and is of no proof that house prices are doing anything at all. And I wouldn't disagree with that. But put them all together and ask yourself what you think is going to happen. And then apply it to your local market for the kind of properties that you are concerned with. Um, and I've, I've been, um, we're live streaming on the Best Agent channel for agents as well tonight because I really want agents to understand this too. It's so important because if agents would stop using media headlines to inform their market perspective and start using actual real data that's going to be more helpful for you and your customers and avoid the ridiculous amount of overpricing that's happening that's killing transaction volumes and the industry along with it, then I think it'd be better. So that's why I'm, I'm doing this for agents as well this evening. Okay, point number one. These are in no particular order. This is from Property Industry, and this is Christopher Watkin, who does a video, and there's a link to this. In, I've listed all eight links on the blog post on my website, right? Chris does this every week. He does a video, and it gets posted on Property Industry, which is the industry website about what's happened in the UK property market, right? And they use data from a company called 20 EA. And this, this is the one part, the one fact from this I wanted to show you, which is this one here. This is really important, right? Listings versus sales prices. Listing versus agreed sales prices, okay? So this is the actual price at which the deal is agreed. The, di the, the difference continues to hang around like a bad smell Chris says, at the 23% mark. 23% difference between new listing prices and average sale agreed prices. And for comparison purposes, the long-term average is between 16 and 17%, which the best agent data I've got also reflects. When you look at the, the average asking prices of stuff that's not sold, compare it with the average price asking prices of stuff that is sold, and there's about a 15% difference normally. And this is the actual sale agreed price, 23% difference. It's much, much higher than the usual long-term difference. And you can see where that red line is going up and the orange line is not going up so much, right? So that's that's point number one, right? There's a big difference. Now, this does not mean that you can go out there and offer 23% below asking price on any property. Don't be that guy, please, or girl. Please don't be that. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying does not apply to any individual property or any individual market. We are doing a macro analysis of the UK so you can see what the overall trend is, okay? There are well-priced properties out there that are going for over asking price because they've been sold by good agents and realistic sellers. And there are there's stuff out there listed with prices 30% below what it's worth and it's just sitting there. Do not please use this as, oh, well, I saw a video and Charlie said it's 23%, so I'm offering 23% below asking price. That would have to assume that all asking prices are uniformly overvalued at 23%, which is obviously not the case. So please don't do that. Please don't be that person. That's point number one, okay? 23% difference, which is a much bigger than the usual 16% difference between newly listed asking prices and sale agreed prices. That's point number one. On to point number two. Now, this is somewhat anecdotal. But nevertheless, on Twitter today, Property Log posted that there are over 5,000 price reductions per day happening at the moment, okay? Excluding relistings. That's about 110,000 properties lowering their published asking price per month. Now, I don't have a long-term comparison for that, but what I do know is when there are only around about 200,000 new properties listed per month, 
it gives you some sort of idea of the scale. It is a very high number. It's why they posted that tweet today. It's a very high number. But 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 right move says prices are going up. You say that's because they only talk about newly listed asking prices and they exclude all of the reductions happening across all of the stuff that came on more than a month ago. Okay. So that's point number two. Very high number of price reductions per day. Would that happen if prices were going up? I don't think so. Number three, right move. This is not recent, this is from a month or so ago. But Rightmove actually published this blog post, which it interestingly does not refer to in, in yesterday's house price index. But home valuation requests from future sellers hit new record. Now, again, on its own, that is not a sign of house prices collapsing. But when you've got a record number of people looking for valuations from estate agents to come to the market, it is a fairly compelling leading indicator of supply going up very fast. Okay. I've linked to that. You can read it for yourself. That's point number three. Okay. So very hard, large number, record numbers, according to Rightmove themselves, of home valuation requests from... Uh, to estate agents, right? That's on the Rightmove website. And that was point number three. The point number four begins with a private message that I received on Instagram from someone today. And I've just, I've just redacted it to show you the relevant part. Uh, uh, so this buyer is out there looking and a lot of agents are saying the market's fine it is there we are the headlines are reading that the market has picked up and this is what i mean about estate agents quoting headlines to back up what's happening in the market estate agents are local and they can't use national headlines to talk about what's happening in the local market and just to be fair to them what you should say to them is never mind what's happening nationally what's happening here what can you tell me about what's happening here? What evidence have you, have you got of the market for flats or houses, whatever it is I'm talking to you about, here? Don't talk about national headlines. Get, get, get. And he goes on to say that he schooled that estate agent. Uh, but then during the viewing he had today, he asked the estate agent, what do you think the market is doing right now? His very refreshing response, well, it's just not good at the moment and it's very much a buyer's market. Now, still on this point number, which is point number four out of eight, I want to talk about something, someone who might be seeing that going, but that's just one agent in one market saying that. It happens to be a market that actually is doing slightly better than average. Um, and what if, but didn't right move tell us that, uh, that everything was great um, and that the house prices are going up? Again, this bears repeating, okay? Whenever anyone uses right move to tell you what's happening, you've got to remind them that, that right move's house price index is newly listed instructions only, excludes reductions, even ones within the first month, and also excludes reductions from all the other ones. There's 5,000 reductions a day that are happening, okay? So when an estate, and there are plenty more agents like that out there, the honest ones saying, it's a buyer's market, it's tough out there, right? When an agent tells you that, it's not, it's never a good market. I mean, in a good market, there are no agents saying it's tough out there. Can't believe we're halfway through the eight points already. I'll have a sip of my tea before it goes cold. Let's have a quick look in the live chat. What are you guys up to? Are you behaving or are you? Yes, everyone behaving so far. Cool. Um, if you want to pop your questions in, questions on these points or challenges to these points, Please put a question in there and I will look in the live chat for comments or challenges on this data at the end. Okay, so that's point number four. Point number five. Now you may, uh, I've actually got another update on this as well. So point number five, one moment. Oh, 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 sorry. While we're on point number four still, um, there is uh Another point I wanted to make to you that shows the difference. I've got up-to-date data on the same borough from Rightmove and from the land registry. Now, let me just show you. So this is Rightmove's most recent data 
for London boroughs broken down. Okay, and they list this list is in order of highest annual growth to lowest annual growth. Right, and the highest is Richmond on Thames, and the lowest is Camden. And this is based on three months data. And right in the middle of this list is Wandsworth, which is saying that year on year it's down 0.8% annual change overall, right? Even though the monthly change is down 3.1%. And they're all over the place, right? Every, every borough pays differently. Now let's look at what so bear in mind that 0.8% fall in Wandsworth from Right Moves most recent data. And now let's look at what the ONS says. There is a new page out on the ONS website, brand new out today, where they offer regional, uh, um, the ONS offers regional house price data. And I picked Wandsworth and I wanted to show you this graph here. Because this really underlines what I'm the point I'm making about the fact that a market is different for every different property type, even in one borough. Okay. Um, change in house price type by property type. So the top one there is detached, and that is minus 8.1 or 8.2 percent. So detached properties in Wandsworth, according to the ONS, using land registry data, are over 8% down in January, based on January 2023. But semis are only 3.5% down, terraced about 2.5% down, and flats actually are only down about 1.2%. So there's 1.2% up to eight, sorry, minus 1.2% up to minus 8.2% in one London borough spread among the different property types. And I keep on banging this drum because I really want all of you to, when, you, when you've got questions about the housing market or house prices, unless you break it down as to what kind of property and what area, the question's impossible to answer, okay? So if you've got questions for me about house prices, always say, I'm looking at semis in this town, or I'm looking at flats in that city, or I'm looking at detached houses in that county or in that region. You've always got to include those basic bits of information, property type and area at least, right? And preferably rough budget before anyone can be a comment because look how different they can be. So even if people say, what about the Southeast? Again, it, it varies depending on different towns and different property types, all right? But what I wanted to show you actually, sorry, is to compare with Rightmove because Rightmove said Wandsworth was down minus 0.8% on the year, but the ONS says, Actually, it's down 1.8%. All right? That's quite a big difference. That's more than twice the size of fall in Wandsworth. And this, of course, is because asking, sorry, actual paid prices, which is what this data is based on, is based on, is from a very different point in the transaction from asking prices, which are at the very beginning of a transaction, compared to actual prices that are at the very end reported by the land registry at the end of the transaction. So sorry, that was the extra part of point four. So we're still on point four. I'm now going to go on to point five. Point number five is that property mark, and I have an update on property mark for you. Okay, interesting. Um, Property mark reported, when was this? What was this? So March 18th, just a couple of days ago. I think it was Monday. Commenting on Right Moves House Price Index, that their member agents, which is a lot, it's a large number of all agents, have reported an 80% increase in the number of new properties available. Right? 80% increase in new properties available. And it goes on to say a 29% increase in the number of market appraisals undertaken. Uh, he then says that that goes on to show that there's growing appetite amongst buyers and sellers alike, which is a very diplomatic way of saying there's an increase in buyer interest, but it's not as big as in the increase in sellers coming to the market. So yes, there's there's been there's been an increase in in uh, transactions, and it's up a little bit, and that's good. But they're all downplaying. And in fact, Rightmove, in its monthly house price index out yesterday, 
does not mention at all how many new properties come in the market and what size, what the total number of stock available is. Doesn't mention it at all. Talks a lot about buyer interest. Doesn't mention that the stock, the supply numbers are going up massively. Okay, so 80% increase in new properties available and 129% increase in the number of market appraisals suggests that there's an even bigger increase in the number of properties coming to market. And I will let you work out for yourselves what that means for house prices, okay, overall, whether you think that's going to put down a pressure or not on house prices. That's point number five from Property Mark. And my update on Property Mark is that today I've agreed to, I have been invited by the boss of Property Mark to go up and spend some time with him at the headquarters and see exactly what they're doing. Because I, I've been quite critical of Property Mark, which is an, a state agency association. It used to be called the NAEA, the National Association. It's now called Property Mark. Um, they're the guys who are sponsored by Phil Spencer and who I've criticized heavily for, for just painting roses and fairies and unicorns and rainbows onto what's happening in the housing market rather than actually helping their member agents by being more frank and honest about what's happening in the property market, which would help more transactions happen, which would help less of their members go out of business. So I'm looking forward to spending time with Nathan uh, and finding what he's doing and having this discussion with him and trying to point out that honesty breeds transactions. And overpricing just pre breeds unsellable properties. So that's uh, exciting. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. That's, that's not until May, unfortunately, but there we are. The next point, point number six, is mortgage approvals. Now, mortgage approvals are important. And I've really tried to not dramatize this too much. Uh, by going back 10 years with this data, all right? Mortgage approvals are a very strong leading indicator of what's going to happen. Now, if we if we do it from 2021, so just the last three years, you will see that there's a very pronounced downward trend in, um, sorry, it's taking a long time now, uh, in mortgage approvals and there is a direct correlation between mortgage approval numbers and house prices goodness me there we are okay thank goodness for that right so that's for the last three years from 2021 to 2024 and let's just have a look at let's just take a minute here so people understand what the actual numbers are this is non-seasonally adjusted so this is actual mortgage approvals for new home purchases um going back to january 2021 so three years ago okay 70,000 up to 95,000 in March and 94,000 and then 70,000 and then okay back down at the end of the year December's always lower 54,000 in December 55,000 and January 52,000 so there we are January is always low oh, I accept that January is always low right up we go again 80,000 74 76 75 and then back down and this was um uh around about the time of the mini budget right so it was September 2022 and October was when the mini budget and then that's why you saw that real tail off down there they, remember they pulled thousands of mortgage products and we got down to 29,000 and even to it but lower than that January a year ago right so and, and that's the lowest it's ever been except for the pandemic weird spike that's the lowest in the, these these records show going back more than 10 years right so where we are now, it's still, just look at that trend line, okay? The trend is tr over the last three years, is trending, trending, trending down. This is very slow, but, but there we are. Now, they reported this this increase, but it's still an increase from 36,000 to 43,000. That's not the lowest that it's been, but but the media reported that is mortgage approvals are up. And overly simplistic thinking buyers just think the word up and down is all they need to know what's understanding. And if anything to do with the housing market is up, they go, oh, that must be good, right? Or well, anything to do with the housing market is down, down, bad, up, good. And so the media goes, mortgage approvals up, good. But actually, look at it. It's very, very low, even though it's slightly up on last year. And going back to 2014 again, um, it'll take its time to do it. But just so you can see the long-term uh, average difference. Um, I, I'm trying not to be sensational. I'm trying to give you absolute impartial observation of these facts right but mortgage approvals are down at forty-three thousand, and you can see here right here it is let's come back quicker this time but the long-term thousand here 
is but see that's the sixty thousand line, that's the eighty thousand line, and apart from the seasonal dip, it's up between sixty and eighty thousand, right? But in the last year, it's all been between sixty and forty thousand. It's down, it's down. Now you might think, hey, that's that's fine. It's going to bounce up soon, Charlie. But I want to know why. I don't think it's going to. So that's fact number six, and number seven. UK mortgage arrears rose to a seven-year high at the end of 2023. This is the Financial Times reporting Bank of England data. Let's take a minute to look here, right? Because what we've got here on the left-hand side is 2007. Uh, they were down here. Um, this is the percentage of all loans. And actually, the peak didn't get reached until after the house prices had come down in 2009 that's when they reached the peak so house prices actually if you remember it really came down in 2007 2008 but the peak in arrears wasn't until 2009 okay and what we've got down here on the right hand end of the graph is that since 2022 or the middle of 2021 arrears have been ticking up and starting to trend up and they've been trending up for over a year now and so i ask you to take into consideration when you are thinking about what's happening in the housing market to think that mortgage approvals have been trending, sorry, not mortgage approvals, mortgage arrears, mortgage defaults and arrears um, have been trending up for over a year now. What, what's your opinion on where that number goes from here? Are they going to continue to go up? Are mortgage arrears and mortgage defaults going to continue to rise? Well, that would depend on the jobs market, I suppose, wouldn't it? And, and on people's earnings and job security. That's another discussion. Um, it is my view that we are seeing, and again, you've got a year of forbearance factored into this. This is on its own, not a smoking gun of a collapsing housing market, but my argument is that house prices are overall, in general, with exceptions, are well underway on their fall and have a lot further to go. And this is another reason why I think they're going to, because arrears and defaults are on the up along with company insolvencies that I haven't even got the data for, right? And with more and more company insolvencies going up, it's more and more people losing jobs, which is more and more people defaulting on their mortgages. It's not going down anytime soon. And if mortgage defaults and arrears are going to go up, that's more people pressured into selling. Okay, so that's fact number seven. And then fact number eight, the final one. So this is inflation adjusted wage growth from the ONS website and as any long time viewers of the channel will know um thanks to alex Groundwater's graphs one of the strongest correlations with house prices is real wage growth now the line in the middle of that graph is the zero line all right that this line here sorry See the zero? So when it's below zero, it's, it's going to be pulling house prices down. When it's above, it's going to be pulling them up. And we just had a period when it went down. So in 2022, when house prices are still rising, real pay fell. So there's a bit of a delay to it, right? And then they did. When inflation, when interest rates started going up, and inflation started going up, wages started going up. But the real pay growth is still only at 1.4%. Now, that's for people who are employed. And the number of people who are employed is falling. So I think that this up, slight uptick in real wage growth is responsible for the delay in house prices falling. So something that I didn't foresee and didn't expect. There were several things that when I did the video back in 2022, I didn't foresee or expect, right? One of them was uh, real wage growth going positive. I didn't expect that, didn't see it coming. And it's one of the reasons why house prices overall have appeared to hold up better. Or as I see it, house price falls are looking slower and taking longer, okay? So where does real house price growth go from here? Sorry. <laughs> I can't even hear myself saying these things wrong. Where do real wages, where does real wage growth go from here? Nobody knows. That's something that you've got to figure out for yourself. My view and Alex's view, for reasons that we've gone through in recent live streams, is that the economy is getting worse and worse, especially on a per head basis, 
right? GDP per head has been shrinking for nearly two years now. Unemployment is rising, job vacancies are falling. Okay, so let's just have a look at job vacancies. This is job vacancies on the, of the last um, 10 years. And if we just do the last three years, you can see that there. Uh, so these are job vacancies. And uh, just double check, you can see that. So that's, that's job vacancies going back to three years, all right? Unless someone has a knowledge of a brand new boost for employment that's going to make job vacancies shoot back up again, I see that number continuing to trend downwards. And if job vacancies trend downwards, there are fewer jobs, vacancies for people to get jobs, that's going to contribute to the downward momentum of people's earnings and wage growth, and therefore the downward momentum of house prices, in my view. Um, here is the graph which is from the ONS showing actual um, gross domestic product per person, per head. So this is, are we as a country getting richer or poorer? Because GDP is flatlining as our population is growing. So if GDP is flat, I mean, we're technically in recession at the moment, January had a small uptick, but GDP is, let's just call it stagnant. Let's be kind and generous and say that it's stagnating, right? If with the population increasing and GDP stagnating, it means that in, individually we're all getting poorer. And if we're all getting poorer, house prices cannot go up. Because no matter how many of us there are, if we don't have the money to pay for increasing house prices, then they can't go up right? So guys, there we go. That was a lot to get through. I can't believe you're all still there. I've got it through it in half an hour. Let's take some, um, let's take some comments, chats, challenges. Do we have any constructive challenges to this? Does anyone think that I'm just drinking my own Kool-Aid for too long and I need to wake up and actually see that actually everything's fine? The economy's rosy, job vacancies are going to shoot up, earnings is going to shoot up, everyone's going to be richer and everyone's going to be able to afford more and to pay more for houses. Am I just missing that memo somehow? Or are things like they look? Um, Yacek D asks, when will people who are in mortgage arrears start listing their properties? Right. Well, not necessarily all of them will list that will sell their properties. You don't sell your property because you're in arrears. You sell it if it's if you default. Or so when you default on a mortgage, that will lead to a repossession or a sale. Okay. So this mortgage arrears number is just a leading indicator of pressure, and people who are in arrears might be forced to sell. But if they're over, you know, there are people who are making the mistake of coming to the market thinking the house is worth more than it actually is and they're finding that they can't sell it anyway and they're already negative equity it's too late to sell so but what you will see is a grant as mortgage arrears continue to rise there will be more and more and more properties coming to the market and if you go back to right moves record appraisals or record valuation requests this year and property mark saying that there's a 129 percent increase in requests for market appraisals there's an argument that says that this is already happening Um, Peter Harris, I'm not sure if you're saying that you're a, are you a huge baby boomer homeowner? Huge baby boomer homeowners stuck, moving too expensive. Yeah, because you guys have got a really bad stamp duty to pay, haven't you? Um, and no bungalows for sale. <laughs> okay, this this is a great, uh, uh, hello, Peter. Um, welcome to the channel, a new name. Um, but here is an anecdotal example of the downsizes competing with first-time buyers for things like, for example, bungalows. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. God, that's really interesting. And so it's Peter Harris again saying, sitting in big houses and can't downsize. Retirement villages, uneconomic, huge annual fees. Trapped in your big crumbling piles. Um, 
Chirag Patel says, question, that's not a question, that's a statement. But anyway, your statement is, real wage growth correlates with real house prices. Your call is nominal. Um, I think I've covered that. Uh, and no, that graph is, is not nominal. It is real. Um, I would like to just get that graph back up um, to back up that point. Okay, here's the graph title. Yeah, total pay brackets real. It's real wage price growth, not nominal. So Chirag, I'm sorry, real wage growth correlates with real house prices. You're right. And I think real wage we, real wages are going to fall again for reasons that I've explained. Um, have I answered that question? And if not, please ask the question again. If I misunderstood the question, ask it again. Um, I'm not gonna... Sean Reardon says, how much of mortgage arrears are retail versus buy-to-let mortgages? I think that Bank of England stuff is homeowner mortgage arrears. Buy-to-let mortgage arrears are higher and going up faster from memory. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but from memory, that's the case. Um, I see loads of ex-rentals coming to the market, but not much else. Yes, that's true. A lot of ex-rentals. Um, Nikki Nike makes a very good observation that fixed mortgage rates, people still on fixed mortgage rates that, have, that are still keeping coming to an end over a long period of time, have also slowed down the number of properties coming to the market. But I think the increase in properties coming to the market now, we're starting to see the effect of those fixed rates coming to an end. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. That's a really interesting comment that Peter made. I hadn't thought about this. There are boomers in big houses who can't actually afford to downsize even if they want to. Interesting. Jason Lung says, property is one of the slowest moving asset classes. It takes time for the sheep to realize they're going to the slaughter. Very, very true, accurate observation, I think. Perry James says, to quote Paul Simon, house prices are slip sliding away. Okay. Right, Billy Big Call says, Charlie, if falls are a slower rate than your earlier prediction, expectation, not prediction, will we see the bottom later or still 2025? I don't know. I, 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 my, I've always said 35% peak to trough over however long it takes. And how long do I think it's going to take? I'm currently saying about three years. I actually, at the moment, expect that house prices will then stick at the bottom for a while, and regionally it'll be very varied, but most of all they'll just bumble along the bottom after that. So, But we won't see the bottom reported, and or, or house prices sort of levelling off, uh, until 2026. Um, but it, I think the actual, the bottom, not meaning it's going to come back up again, although there usually is a bit of a bump and then it does that. Once people think, oh, it's the bottom, let's pile back in. And it's a huge mistake. And be, go and look at the graph of house prices after the last downturn to see how many people got caught out by that, the dead cat bounce at the bottom. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Leandro Z says, Charlie, if job openings are going down, arrears are going up, Businesses are going bust and around one and a half million need to get a new mortgage rate in 2024. When do you see the breaking point for the economy? I, I don't have a particularly strong feeling of when it happens. I also don't know what might cause it because I mean, I, I was talking to Alex today um, about the fact that it, there's a lot of the, there's a lot of news about the commercial real estate collateralized loan obligations and people defaulting on those in America and whether that could be a bomb that goes off a debt bomb a debt time bomb that goes off that triggers a bit of a change that causes a banking event that causes a I don't know how it starts but in terms of how you know I think that by the end of this year whatever's happening in the economy because we've got an election coming, and that's always put, this puts the brakes on the housing market as well, traditionally anyway. Um, I, I think, yeah, at the end of this year is when it'll be really clear that house prices have fallen and are falling, and there's a load of unsold stock on the market, which people aren't buying. Um, but breaking point for the economy, I think it's going to need some kind of event to trigger the economy actually breaking. I mean, I think it's been broken for a long time, but they've just been keeping it on life support, but the life support machine's running out of batteries. And yeah. 
Baal Kura, I'm sorry if I've said that wrong, which I certainly have, walked around the West End today, so many empty units on Regent Street and New Bond Street, it's not looking healthy. No, that's the same in lots of places now, actually. Um, uh, Nejar Rajawat says, some property are still on the market where it says offers over a certain value on right move. Does it indicate the property is in demand? Um, no. It doesn't. Uh, there are a lot of people. I actually, I've had one of the people that booked a private video call with me. And remember, to those of you who are new here, you can book a private video call with me, thirty minutes or one hour, um, uh, via my website mhwc.co.uk or buymeacoffee.com forward slash mhwc. Um, I'll put the links below at the end of the video. Uh, one of those customers actually was talking to me today about a particular property uh, where it's been on the market. It offers over for months and it's still there unsold and he offered asking price and initially they've rejected it so you do get a lot of these sellers with unrealistic expectations thinking that just by putting offers over it means that they're going to get off of those and they don't understand that whatever you want to put as an asking price it has no relation to the price you get for the fact for the property except that the, if it's too high you'll end up getting less of the property than you would have done if you'd listed it at a better price Having said that, there are some very good quality agents who've got very realistic clients who are putting houses on at a price that they are they know is going to sell because it's a good property in an area where there's demand for those properties. And there are properties that will go for offers over because they've been deliberately priced very intelligently to get competing buyers. So just because you see offers over, it doesn't tell you one way or the other. It's usually someone with, I mean, more often than not in this market, it's someone being over optimistic and hoping that they're going to get offers over what they think is a keen price, but isn't. Uh, but normally, so, and the, the easy way to tell is, has it been on the market for a, a few months? If it's been offers over for a few months, you know that they were uh, over optimistic. If it's been offers over, but after a few weeks, it's gone sale agreed, then you know that it was priced sensibly. I hope that helps. Um... A Green Dog says, I hope you're right, as I have been waiting before buying, but the rich are getting richer than buying all the assets, so the reverse might happen. Now, I've got this reminds me to repeat my mantra, which is if you need a home and you've found a home you want to live in that you can afford, and you've had an offer accepted at a price that isn't overpaying, always buy now. Just don't overpay. I have never, never said that it's all wait for prices to fall. I said, be out viewing, be out viewing, be out viewing. Always get out and view, get out and view, get out and view. I've never said wait. Because there are certain markets for certain properties in certain parts of the country where house prices won't fall. Where you've got boomers fighting first-time buyers over the, the most affordable, efficient properties, and those ones just aren't going to fall in price. So, I've never told anybody to wait, and you shouldn't wait because you see that I think overall they're going to come down 35%. You should go and look in your own market and find out what's happening. Get out and view. Even if prices are coming down and, and you're not in a hurry, I'd still be out viewing because you will get that seller that's keen to sell and drops the price, and you can get in there earlier. Um, Urban Achiever asks, do you think that inflation has done the heavy lifting in regard to house price correction? So far, the fall is 18.5% in real terms. It, it's a very good point. Um, and I actually, I, I never talk in real terms because people just go, oh, you're, you're doing that real thing where you're saying real versus nominal and that's, oh, they're not real house price falls. They really are real house price falls. And yes, real house price falls are already substantial uh, in terms of actual value. So if you bought a home four years ago for £250,000 and you're selling it now for £250,000, you have lost whatever inflation is between, you know, over those four years, okay? Because £250,000 today does not buy you as much food or petrol or anything else or electricity um, or any other goods for that matter as it did four years ago. So your house is worth less. If you were to sell your house today and go and buy food with it, just literally go and use all the money from your house sale to go and buy food, you'd have 20% less food than you did four years ago, roughly, or more. It could be, actually, for food, it's worse than that, isn't it? That's a good question. Andy Ruffin says, 
does the fact that lend, uh, lenders are lending over longer periods, e.g. 35 years, mean that Alex is linked to earnings growth is not going to be so strong? I don't know. It's a good question. I'll put to Alex. But the um, lenders lending over longer periods has been going on for a while. It's not a sudden thing. It is happening. Um, I'm really looking for, for questions that are challenging any of these eight points that I've made. Um, yeah, James Phillips says, I'm telling you, fact. It's actually your opinion, James, but yes, I, I get the point. We are a poorer country, that is a fact, and those gambling on property as an investment are in for a shock. I agree with that opinion. We are slashing prices and as an agency. This year is going to be horrific. Oh, are you in a state hidden, James? Let me know. Um, someone called Almost There says, question, is your timing off? Things are a bit shit but not that bad. Mm, I think 4 million people in destitute, destitution and poverty is, is pretty bad. Pay is... Uh, people who want jobs have them. Is that true? Does everyone have jobs they want? Pay is up. That's subjective. What do you mean? Up over what? Uh, pay might be up, but uh, uh, GDP per head is down, and there are not enough houses. There are enough houses. They're not in the right places. Jesus Christ. There really are enough houses, guys. There really are enough houses. As a country, we have enough houses, and there's new data out, and there's data from the House of Lords. We don't have enough homes, affordable homes, in the areas they're needed, and that makes it feel like we don't have enough houses. And the effects of immigration are concentrated on those places where it feels in that whole city like, oh my God, there aren't enough affordable houses. And yes, there are cities where that's the case. But as a country, there are enough houses. They're just, there are whole streets of empty houses in some cities. Um, and there's plenty for sale. They're just too expensive. And that's why house prices are going to come down. Paddington Mouse puts up a challenge to my response to Gary Stevenson's argument that house prices are going to go up because rich people are going to buy and sell them for fun to each other because they're just going to buy and sell all assets. My argument against that was uh, that houses are not liquid assets. You can't buy and sell them from your smartphone on the back of your yacht. They're very high hassle uh, and they are looking much riskier now than they have done for a long time. So... Uh, Paddington Mouse says, of course the rich won't buy houses in their own name, but under limited companies and may pay someone to manage it for them. Right. Paying someone to manage your residential property portfolio of crumbling Victorian homes would completely wipe out any potential profit that you might get. It's just not a good investment like other asset classes where you can buy and sell from your smartphone anywhere in the world in a few seconds. Right. It's not like that. And yes, the people with lots of money might buy cash homes for their kids and the families, but these there are not that many people, not enough to move the needle on the housing market. So I just don't think, you know, if you're the super rich, and by that I mean funds in excess of what you're ever going to need in your lifetime, right? If, you, if you've got a couple of million pounds as your net worth now, but you're still a working age, that doesn't make you super rich in my book, because you're going to wipe out that money in your in your retirement, in care costs and children costs and that kind of stuff, and inflation. So to me, the rich, the definition of really rich is people who've got, who got who have accumulated excess funds, far in excess of what they're ever going to need in their life, right? So they're just playing with that money. It's risk money, yeah? Property, residential property is just, is just not fun. It's slow. It's grinding. It's hassle. It's tax. It's neighbours. It's maintenance. It's tenants. It's, oh, God, honestly. I mean, I've been there and done it. I've been a property investor and I've been a landlord and I've worked in property for years. And I know many, many people of the type that I've described who, who do. And, and they, they, no, they don't want that hassle. They just don't want the hassle. Um... Uh, okay, the, the age-old question I get all the time, anyone going for mortgage should go two, two or five years. Always it depends on your risk preference. What's more important to you? Two years of certainty and then a gamble on what happens after that? Or five years of certainty and then the gamble on what happens after that? That's the only answer to that question. Because nobody knows what's going to happen two or five years from now. Nobody does. Right? It, it's, it's, and so do you want to gamble or don't you want to gamble? If you want to gamble, take a two-year fix. 
ask the guys who took a two year fix out three years ago how that gamble went for them, whether they wish to take out a five year mortgage, right? It's a gamble. Taking a shorter term rather than a longer term is a gamble. Oh, but if I don't, if I take a five years and then rates come down, I've lost money. How much will you have lost? I, I, honestly, how much will it actually make? How much might you, if rates did come down a bit during that five year period when you fixed of your five year period, work out how much you make and then say, is that amount worth gambling the risk for? And there's your question, there's your answer, I mean. Mm-hmm. Maria Marie Novotna says, I see so many more reduced products going to the market. Inventory is huge. Yes. Um, um, almost there says you did not answer the question. Can you restate the actual question then if I didn't answer it? Actually, because you haven't. What's the actual question you're asking me? I, I may not know the answer anyway. Okay, James. So James Phillips does appear to be an estate agent. We are getting hardly any calls to even view, let alone offer. We are stripping weekly or trying at least to advise sellers. All right, that means to get the prices done. Um, James, it'd be very interesting to know where you are because it's very, very nice to have an honest estate agent telling us what it's really like out there. Um, just looking through the questions. Black Coffee says, there are so many houses now selling in my area. Guys, whenever you want to type the words my area, could you give us just a rough clue? North, south, city, country? It always helps, right? Um, even stock that has been on the market for six or more months has, uh, has recently shifted. Oh, there are selling. So many houses selling in my area. What area is that? It's really interesting to know. It would be very useful for everyone to know where that is. Um, a lot of run-down buy-to-let flats in the market in London, which are overpriced and sellers don't budge. Uh... AJ says, I found out today that I offered asking price because I really wanted this property, Charlie. Someone's cash is bought over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that does happen. When, when, when properties that get competing buyers on them are priced correctly, people will go over asking price. Yeah, Black Coffee, tell me where you are because without knowing where you are, it's impossible to comment. Flat or house, what city, uh, roughly what budget? Uh, uh, Cookie Monster, and it, 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 everyone knows who the Cookie Monster is. The Cookie Monster is always right. Charlie's right. <laughs> Thanks, Cookie Monster. Um, so this is what I call a baseless challenge. I'm now enjoying my home and have begun renovations. I'm also starting to doubt the line you're taking with predicting the marketplace and the drops. Why? Why are you doubting that? I've just given you eight data points that talk about the housing market. Which one don't you agree with? Or which one or more don't you agree with? Do you think any of them don't put downward pressure on house prices? If real wage growth stays positive um, going forward, don't forget, real wage growth isn't affected by um, employment numbers. So the actual most important number is GDP per head. But you know, tell me why. I, mean, I know that there are people, lots of people. I mean, the overall overwhelming narrative that everything's OK keeps being pumped out. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's all OK. It's all OK is very convincing and very compelling. And there are plenty of people, millions of people, who are absolutely fine. I'm wondering what all the fuss is about. But there are, is an increasing number of people for whom that's not the case. And the economy is very delicate. You tip the balance just slightly, the whole economy slides the wrong way. Uh, Leandro Z asked a good question. Why, why do station websites not have the updated actual sale value instead of leaving a sold subject contract with the old asking price. That's because the sellers don't often want to admit what they've actually sold it for publicly until they have to. 
Uh, yeah, Lil Lil Mano Nine says, "Was wrong today by an EA regarding house I viewed last Friday? Where they told me the house had eight offers already, all over asking price. Great agent, well done that agent. <laughs> Selling a property very quickly, getting an auction thing, and getting it, getting find out what the market will actually pay for that house." Um, eight offers already over the Russian price. I had a 4.30 deadline or it's gone. Guess what? It's still listed. Oh, I see. Oh, they're just lying to you then. Sorry, I didn't get to the end there. It's still listed. Yeah, yeah. You will get agents that are desperate ones who will literally lie to your face that they've got lots of competing offers to get you to offer. And if there's any doubt, if you're a buyer and you come across that scenario and they say, oh, we've got so many people, they can see that you like the property and they say, we've got so many buyers and they're all offering. And you've got even the slightest bit of doubt, then the thing to say to them is, "All right, if it doesn't work out, give me a call back because I don't want to get involved in that, in that uh, bidding frenzy." That's the way. That's you will really quickly smoke out a bullshitting agent if you do that. Um, because they'll say, "Oh, all right, okay, fine, yeah, but what what might you offer if you you know if they start to say what might you offer then if they weren't in the other office going, then that's just pretty much an admission that they were lying to you." Uh. Why are we not hearing, Yachek D says, why are we not hearing of a state going out of business? They are going out of business. 5,000 went out of business last year. There are lots going out of business and there are stations merging. Uh, there are new ones starting up as well because a lot of the people who've lost their jobs at estate agents that are closing down are setting up on their own. Um, but fewer are setting up than are closing. So there are estate agents going out of business, but the big ones won't for a while. James Phillips confirms, yes, I'm an agent. And yes, when talking to those who have spent X amount two years ago, thinking it always goes up and now coming back scratching heads because they don't take into account the economy whole. Yeah. Um, Cookie Monster says, yeah, richer like 10 million plus. Yep. Uh, uh, I'm not saying that people with millions of pounds aren't rich, relatively speaking to people who don't have millions of pounds. But what I'm saying is, they still don't have enough to retire and never work again and live comfortably for the rest of their life because of the late life care costs and, and housing costs and housing children costs and all that kind of stuff is what I'm saying. That's not, You now need millions to do that. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Lots and lots of comments. Okay, Marek Dorchik asks the question, is it worth offering below asking in London? Marek, house? semi Detached house? Semi-detached? Terraced? Flat? Which borough? What do the prices show in that borough? Is the house you're, is, is the property you're looking at, um, has it been on for a long time? Or has it just come on recently? I can't ask that. So, general questions like this are impossible to answer because it depends on the property. Every property is different. Every seller situation is different. The situation unique between the buyer and the seller is always different. So um, if there's a property that's been sitting on the market for a long time and you go in and you view it and you like it, absolutely it's worth offering. Never mind below asking. You just offer what it's worth to you. You ignore the asking price and make the offer it's worth to you. Okay? Always worth offering. But don't offer, your offer should never be based on the asking price, never. It's based on what it's worth to you. That might be more than the asking price if the asking price is really keen and they've just put it on the market. It might be less than the asking price. It's got nothing to do with asking price or relative to asking price. Whatever the agent says, whatever the seller says, that's guff, ignore it, right? You just offer your maximum comfortable price on that property. Um, and you're a new name here, and so forgive me if I'm sounding a little bit like I've asked that question a million times, because I have, um, but always worth repeating the answer to that question. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, Um, what can I comment about Chris Walker's latest programs? Uh, without you giving me actual numbers to comment on, I can't comment. <clears throat> um, a challenge. Urban Achiever says that there are not enough forced sellers. 
and few buyers willing to meet asking prices has result in the stagnant market. How does this end? I'm sorry, that I, I can't make sense of that question right now. Um, I'll keep going. Um, BBC says ONS reporting 9% rent rise year on year. Okay, so an average national rent rise is as useless as an average national house price change because it varies depending on house or flat or area, etc. Okay, there are places that are rents going down. Chesterton recently reported asking rents in London are down 10%. Okay, so just remember it's the same for rent as it is for buying. National averages are completely meaningless in, in a local context. Um, uh, Shirag Patel challenges me again saying all the points you mentioned have been reflected in real prices already that's an opinion there's no data to back that up because we don't know what today's prices are because of the land registry's delay in reporting house prices um, and what I'm talking about is where I think things are going to continue to happening. So if your point is that all the points I mentioned have already been reflected, there are still trends with a long way to go, right? For example, mortgage arrears rising haven't been reflected yet because they're going to continue rising, all right? So that's my response to your challenge. Tina Faye says, how can you tell if a property is overpriced? because it's sitting there unsold with no viewings booked in it is the first giveaway. You know, any property that's been sitting on the market for three months or more is almost certainly overpriced. Um, you can't ever go by what was selling. Uh, I've never understood this comparing with 21 or 22 or 19 prices. I, I, again, that, that will vary depending on where you are. Um, you can only, the best way to tell if a property is overpriced or not is to see how much interest there is in it, right? If it comes on the market and it goes under offer within 28 days, um, then it wasn't overpriced. If it's still sitting on the market after that, especially after three months, then it was overpriced. Taz Bo says, all I know is every viewing I go to is full and the house is sold quick in Manchester. Yep, I have seen, Everything I've, I've seen is confirming that Manchester is definitely bucking the national trend and is holding up and prices aren't falling in Manchester uh, as much as they are elsewhere. There, there are such like South Manchester I know is doing better than North Manchester just because I've heard anecdotally. Ruth asks, I'm a cash buyer with nothing to sell. I hope to buy a chain-free property, but less chance of that. How do I get a seller to act quickly? Ask the estate agent on any property you're interested in. Ask the estate agent. Is the seller contract ready? And if not, how long will it take them to be contract ready? When can the seller be contract ready? And don't get a vague answer. Say, no, I'd like a specific answer, please. Before I consider offering, I want to know how serious the seller is. And if they vague and dither and this and that, and they haven't even got a conveyancer yet, I just go, look, come back to me when they're serious about selling. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. James Phillips, North Devon. Uh, so this is the agent in North Devon. I judge everything within two weeks of marketing and the amount of calls or emails I get when the marketing is perfect. You are in competition, so make your pricing sexual. <laughs> You're absolutely right. So that's sellers he's talking about. You are in competition, price keenly. And if it was me, I would always, if I could find other properties comparable to mine listed, I would ignore all the ones that are for sale and haven't sold because they're not selling, so they're overpriced. I would look at the asking prices of the ones showing as sold, and I would assume that they've gone for below their asking price, a few percent, and I would make sure I would then price it somewhere below the showing asking price of the most recently sold property, most like mine, locally to me. That's where I would set my asking price. Uh, because you know that you're going to have the best chance of looking like yours is the best value property of the kind. And that's how you get the, the most buyers competing most quickly. And that's how you find out the maximum that the market will pay for your property. I've gone over the hour. Um, uh, Nikki, you're on X, aren't you? Just ask Alex. Ask Alex himself on, on, on X what he thinks about bricks. 
Um, I, I think BRICS is a little bit of a red herring. It, maybe not in, in the long term, but it is in the terms of the UK housing market right now. Um, guys, I can't keep up with questions. I've got, I've got to go. I've got to wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope that was a useful... Um, I, I mean, I, I haven't felt any really compelling arguments against those eight points. And I would, I would finish by saying this. Oh, let me just put this. If you want to book a video call with me, that's the URL that you can do it, right? Book a video call with me. Or you can just join the Movers Q&A Club uh, and ask me questions by message privately, which I guarantee to answer if you remember that club. And again, the housing market moves very slowly. It moves at a glacial pace. The time between asking prices first coming into the market and actual prices paid being reported in real, in the real world terms, is somewhere between twelve and eighteen months at the moment. Okay, and it can take even longer than that. It's very difficult to see what's really happening, especially with the regional variations. But you look at all of those things that I've just shown you this evening. Those eight things: stock levels are up and increasing, mortgage arrears are increasing, mortgage defaults are increasing, business defaults are increasing, GDP per capita is falling, meaning we are getting poorer in real terms, which offsets the very small rise that there is in real wage growth. Um, look at all of it I, you know, and, and form your own view in the context of your local market. But overall, I think that the economy is going to get worse before it get, gets better. And the housing market is, is at some point in the middle of a fairly long slide over roughly three years, give or take six months. Um, and that's just my guess. It's just a guess. It's not a prediction. Oh, my God, some of you get such a boner about it being a prediction, and it's not. Just chill out. I get, I get some really angry people. When are you going to retract your prediction? If enough data changes to change my mind, that change my expectations, I will tell you, I promise you, all right? But don't blame me because you just suck up all of the mainstream media headlines and think that that's proof that everything's fine and can't be bothered to do your own in-depth research. I haven't changed my mind yet. I, I constantly challenge it. I constantly check it. I haven't changed it. And so I'm not going to change my expectation. Not a prediction. And the 35% figure is meaningless to an individual because where you live, it will be different. And for the property type you're looking at, it will be different. This is just an overview of what I see happening nationally. Um, guys, so yeah, book a video with me there if you want to. Uh, otherwise, you can also talk to my hand-picked, trustworthy mortgage broker partners that I work with on my website there. You can also talk to the, the, the exclusive conveyancing partners that I work with, because before you make your offer, have your mortgage and principal, your proof of deposit funds, and your conveyancing lined up to make your competitive offer more proceedable and therefore more valuable than other offers of the same amount. Um, and make sure you also get your property search pack and you offer to buy that the day your offer is accepted. It works. It works. It works. It absolutely works. It doesn't guarantee that your offer is going to be accepted, but alongside other offers, your offer will be much more appealing. Maybe even more appealing than people who are offering more than you. I'm going to stop talking now. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate all of your uh, input here. Ginger Bear, hello, new name. Um, Amy Brunel, new name. Welcome all new followers, uh, especially if you're following on Instagram. Um, and I'm going to figure out, I, I'm going to finish this video with a message just for estate agents. As you know, my website, Best Agent, there it is, right? Best Agent, a national property site. I'm aiming to do three things for estate agents with this. I'm aiming to end overvaluing, which will improve transactions and means you won't have to overvalue to get instructions. I'm aiming to end right moves monopoly and make it optional because I think right moves monopoly is actually uh, unhealthy for the whole market. They've cornered it and it's unhealthy and it contributes to overvaluing. And I'm going to make the lead 
I'm going to level the playing field for leads and make it fairer for all agents. So if you're an agent watching this, please make sure you follow me on the Best Agent channel, Best Agent YouTube channel, Best Agent on Instagram, Best Agent on LinkedIn. Find me there and also on Twitter, Best Agent Boss on Twitter. Um, I'm looking forward to start, starting to talk to the stations about exactly how we can achieve that together for the benefit of all people in the moving industry and the benefit of all movers and ultimately uh, social mobility for society as a whole. Thank you, guys. I'm really going to stop talking now. Lots of love and luck to everyone, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.